Hey, welcome back, everyone. Um, we're going to begin with a question uh, from Dibya, and then we will move forward in our class lecture. Dibya, want to ask your question? Yes, Pastor, thank you. Uh, so my question is especially regarding uh, other people uh, while going through difficulties. Um, when they go through things that uh, maybe we gone through and we do not understand completely the depth of their trouble or suffering, uh, how can we encourage them effectively? Like sometimes I've encountered situations where, you know, they do not want to hear from you because you, you do not completely understand what they have gone through. So uh, in such cases, like how can we encourage um, one is, you know, just to be there to listen to them. You know, sometimes uh, just the fact that we are there to listen um, We may, we may not have answers, and, and there definitely will be times when we don't have answers. But we are there just to listen to whatever they have to say. And sometimes even what they say uh, is more of an expression of their emotions and their struggles. And they just need to share that with somebody. I know the best thing to do is to pray and share our struggles and emotions with God in prayer. But sometimes just to have somebody that you talk to and share that struggle, right? You, you, you we're bearing each other's burdens, like Galatians uh, chapter six says. So that's one thing. It's just to be there and listen. That, 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 that is, support that is um, uh, being an encouragement to them <clears throat> that's one thing so we may not even need to say anything because they, at that point sometimes they're not in a position to they are not in a position to hear and they just need somebody who will be with them to listen to them second is when they ask specific questions, that's the time to speak encouragement. You know, just recently, uh, actually, I think two weeks back, yeah, I think two weeks back, um, a family, a young couple, lost their baby, uh, five months old. Now, it, it was shocking because the baby is the baby looked very normal and they were doing all their regular checkups. You know, they went to the hospital. They were so excited. They had a baby boy. They were going to the hospital regularly for all the regular checkups. The doctor, no problem at all. No problem at all. Everything was fine. Suddenly one day uh, morning, the baby was gasping. So they rushed to the hospital. Next day, baby died. I mean, it, there was just no, no, nothing. I mean, no indication that the baby died. So the, the day the baby was gasping and everything, they went to the hospital and they, the doctors were doing their tests. And uh, at that time, they found out there was, uh, 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 that the heart, the baby's heart was not formed properly. And the doctors were saying, uh, we don't even know how the baby survived five months the baby is not supposed to be alive we don't know how the baby survived five months uh, because uh, you know physiologically there are problems with the way the heart was formed and uh, even before they could like think through on what to do etc cetera, etc cetera, next day I, yeah if i remember correctly the next day baby died now this was you know it, it's it was devastating it was devastating and, uh, you know, now, okay, 
I'm the pastor. Of course, we are a team here. Now, how do you comfort somebody like that? How, what, what, what can you tell? What answers do you give to a family like that? You know? And uh, so, okay, we had to do the funeral. We did the funeral. Uh, I, I didn't say any. I didn't say anything other than look. You know, this is. We know the baby is with Jesus. And then I, uh, I, uh, I told the couple, uh, the couple and the boy's mother. Uh, I said, I'll speak to you. You know, I, I just want to talk. Now, when I set up the call to talk to them, I, I didn't have any answers. But for two hours, I just listened. And it was them expressing their pain, their questions. I just listened. I, I didn't even try to answer any of those questions because you know, how can you answer a, answer those questions? And the pain they're going through, what answers can you give? I mean, I just listened. And I prayed with them. Then uh, did another call alone with the mother of the boy. So that she's like the, the grandmother, you know, because her son's baby. And again, it was like for one hour, and I just, the main thing was to listen. And then she had some, so then she, uh, uh, she asked some things that were not related directly to the baby, but related to, you know, what she was doing. And in those questions, I could just encourage her, you know. So what I'm saying is, you know, uh, this, is, this is not a situation of necessarily of faith, and just more of a, you know, a, a life, a very challenging life situation, unexpected. It just happened so suddenly. It really shook everybody. But the point is, you know, what can we say? We can't say anything other than, you know, just listen to them and journey with them through their grief. You know, in this case, this particular case, uh, I'm saying, we just journey with them. Just be there. And then maybe there may be a question or something in turn that they want to know. That's where you bring encouragement. It's okay, you know, do like this. Keep going forward like that. So uh, I'm just sharing that situation just happened recently, very painful. Do we have answers? No. I mean, theologically, yes. I can give answers. Theologically, I can quote chapter and verse and say, you know, look, this is, this, this is what we all need to keep in, and this is why. It's, but that's not the time to speak those answers. That's not the time to speak those things. That's the time to just keep quiet and be a support, just to be there, just to listen, because they are going through so much pain uh, that we can't even understand. You know, so what should we do? Just be there and let them speak. Let them share their pain. And in some way, uh, as you listen, uh, you're sharing in their pain. You know, and maybe it will make that pain a little lesser. I'm not saying it will go away. This is not an easy thing. Uh, but uh, to some extent, you know, they, they will feel support. So... Um, so I'd go back to answer your, answer your question. How do we support people who are going through difficult times? One is just to be there and listen. Second is at the right time, speak words of encouragement. You know, so for example, when I was listening to the mother, one hour she did most of the speaking, just expressing all her thoughts or confusions or struggles. But then when she specifically asked certain questions, then I could share something to encourage, you know, to carry on in life, to keep doing what she's doing, uh, and so on. You know, so speak few words, and those few words will and speak to encourage their faith. Right? Now, as they 
are going through, uh, and, and I, this is one example. So we really have to be sensitive to uh, the life situation that people are going through. You know, um, last year uh, there was another very close brother, or I, I was using the word, but a very close person. The person was very close to me, and he was going through a divorce. And he was in a different country. And uh, for about four months, I think, like September through December, we would speak almost every day, every day. Uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, so we would do a WhatsApp call and we would speak almost every day, uh, especially during that, that time when he was going through this. You know, it's very painful very close brother and uh, I would just I would just listen you know and now in his case I could speak more because uh, you know because of the level of where he was and I would just speak every time I would listen to him but speak words of encouragement it's okay you know look forward and look at these are the promises of God and you know you have you have to look ahead and so on so and then slowly we, you know, as he came through it, we reduced down to maybe twice a week we would call and I would just, just speak encouragement into his life, pray with him every time. And then now it's more like, you know, once a month I speak to him. Um, but now he's, you know, he's, he's in a better place, spiritually, emotionally stronger. Divorce happened. It had to, it happened and he had to go through it. Uh, but uh, you know we know that's not what God wants, but it's it's a, it's a reality he had to go through, uh, practical thing he had to go through, and you know we just have to speak the word, encourage him. So in his case, I would do much more because of the level at where he was and the relationship I had with him. I could speak into his life, encourage him, and really, in this other family's case, it had to be more of listening, being there. So uh, each situation is different uh, and uh, how, how much you can speak into their lives really depends on, uh, you know, the relationship you share with them, their receptivity to the word uh, and uh, what they need to hear to strengthen them. Those things are, those are all variables, but are very important if you, if you, you know, to sum up what, what we need to say is uh, one is be there to listen. Second is, uh, you know, uh, speak few words, but speak it according to what they're able to listen, what they're able to receive. Uh, the word of God, build them up. I hope that helps. Uh, I know it's not a simple answer, but I hope it. Yeah, sure, sure. Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those experiences. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it is really devastating, but yeah, surely, um, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, that's good. Thank you. Let's go back to where we paused from last class, last session. Oh, sorry, not this one. Yeah, releasing our faith. Okay, so what we were talking about was, you know, we're enduring through trials, difficulties that we face. We have to hold on, uh, be patient. <laughs> And, uh, uh, you know, uh, it tests our faith. Uh, the trials we go through test our faith. But then um, we, we, uh, we, we endure, we go through it. And, uh, you know, when we are facing these trials and we're enduring through these trials, remember, it's, it's an expression of the genuineness of our faith. You know, and, and Peter, Peter, of course, was uh, writing to believers who were being persecuted, actually, for their faith. And he was saying, you know, the genuineness of your faith, that's much more precious than gold. And even if it's going to be tested by fire, and in this case, it was the persecutions they were facing, you know, it will bring honor and glory uh, at the revelation of Jesus. Okay. And here's another passage that we have read, Hebrews 11. We read Hebrews 11 a couple of weeks back. And it, we, we read about people who subdued kingdoms, who, you know, they stopped the mouths of lions, 
they escaped the, the edge of the sword, that they were made strong, uh, that the dead, dead were raised to life. And then we also have others who, you know, they went through torture, they went through uh, mocking and scourging and chains and imprisonments and stoning. I mean, they went through very hard times. So, uh, and, and they just stood firm in faith and they all obtained a good testimony through faith. Okay. And God was preparing them for something ahead. Okay. Now, what we're talking about is how do we express faith? Right. We are saying, first we said confession, second action, third praise, fourth patience. The fifth one uh, I just want to mention is determination. That means we must be determined to receive. It's you've made up a resolve that you will have the promise of God. God said it in the Bible. It's uh, you made a promise and you're going to have it. That determination is so important. We must, you know, and we can use different words, being tenacious, pressing, relentless, unwilling to give up. You're, you know, in a good way, you're stubborn. You're obstinate in a good way. There's a resolve. There's insistence or doggedness. Yeah, we can use different words here. But the thing is, you are so committed to saying, God, I must have what your word says. And that's important. And that sometimes we don't have that kind of determination. So we fail in realizing the result of our faith. We, we don't see it. Okay. So let's look at some examples, you know, and I'll just quickly mention these examples that we, we, we are familiar with. There's this woman with the issue of blood, you know, Mark 5. Yeah, see, you can immediately see her determination when, you know, she had to come through the crowd to get to Jesus. How many of us would have done that? It would have been easier to say, well, you know, maybe today is not my day. There are too many people here. There's such a big crowd. You know, maybe I'll try to find another day when it's a little bit more convenient. There's not that many people, whatever. We could have made so many excuses. But try to imagine this woman. Just try to imagine. Okay, there's Jesus and there's a big crowd around him. Let's say maybe 100 people or we don't know, 100 people, 200 people. We don't know. There's a crowd of people around Jesus. And this one woman wants a miracle. And she has faith. If I touch his garment, I'll be healed. That's her faith. That's her faith. But there's one big problem. So many people around Jesus. How am I going to get to him? How am I going to get to him? That's where determination kicks in. So just imagine, she must have made her way through the crowd. You know, trying to somehow get to Jesus. Just looking for every open space, every opening in the crowd. And we don't know how long it took. You know, we don't know whether it was 10 minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour that she had to kind of weave her way through the crowd. But ultimately, she pressed through until she touched, until she was able to touch the edge of his garment. And she got a miracle. Another example of determination is these two blind men, Matthew 20, on the road to Jericho. So Jesus is passing by. And these blind men, they hear that Jesus is passing by. So they cry out. You know, and uh, there's a crowd following Jesus, and the crowd tells these blind men, keep quiet. You know, don't make such a noise. Keep quiet. They're crying out, son of David, have mercy. The crowd is telling them, keep quiet. So you can imagine, you know, first of all, they are blind men. They are beggars. They're sitting on the 
roadside begging. They've been doing that for, you know, possibly a long time. And here's their only chance. Jesus is passing right, you know, right is passing the road by the road just where they are. So this is their only chance. And uh, the crowd is not supportive. The crowd is against them. The crowd is telling, keep quiet, don't make so much noise. But the Bible says they cried out even more. I mean, they, they, they wouldn't let the crowd dissuade them. They cried out even louder. And then Jesus says, call, says, call them. They get the attention of Jesus. Jesus calls. Then he asks them, what do you want me to do for you? And they are very clear. Lord, we want to receive our sight. And, uh, you know, uh, they receive their sight. So here, um, there's this two blind men. Think about that. They could have been discouraged by the crowd. You know, maybe there are 50 people in the crowd. We don't know. So 50 people are there trying to tell these two blind men to keep quiet. But they wouldn't let that, you know, in any way discourage them. They were determined. Jesus is passing by. This is our chance. We must get our miracle. A third beautiful example of determination is this woman from Canaan, right? Uh, we know her story in Matthew 15. You know, she is, first of all, not a Jewish woman. She's a Canaanite. She probably hears about Jesus, and uh, then she says, look, I'm going to go to Jesus and get a miracle for my daughter. Her daughter is troubled by demons, and she's heard how Jesus you know, drives up demons and sets people free. So she's going to go. And as she makes her way, first problem is the disciples. They start to tell her, sorry, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just trying to imagine here. Uh, they would ask her, you know, where are you from? And she would say, look, I'm from that village. Oh, you're a Canaanite. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We don't, you know, we are not ministering to the Canaanites. We are only ministering to the Jews. So immediately the disciples are trying to say, look, you don't qualify. You're not part of the group that we are ministering to. But she makes her way past the disciples. You know, she, she gets past them somehow, and she goes to Jesus. And when she speaks to Jesus, Jesus says the same thing. He says, I'm sent to the people of Israel. I can't take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. I can't. You know, this is for the children, not, not for others, the Gentiles at that time. She presses past that. She responds and says, just give me a little crumb. You know, just give me a crumb from the table. That's all. And then Jesus you know, tells the woman, you've got great faith. You've got great faith. So why? how did this woman demonstrate great faith? Her determination. Her determination. You know, so... If you know, I just kind of itemize some of the things we see here. She took initiative. She went to Jesus. She went against all odds. The disciples tried to turn her off. She pressed past embarrassment. She was embarrassed. You know, Jesus said, sorry. You know, initially, he did not even answer her. He just kept quiet. That must have been embarrassing. Then she wasn't willing to take no for an answer. When Jesus said, you know, I can't take the children's bread and give it away, that wouldn't stop her. She said, just give me a crumb. And she pressed in until she received what was there. Right? So this is determination. Right? And you see in all three examples, these people had faith. But they had to be determined to get it. They could have been easily turned away or discouraged. But they were determined. And they received you know, what they had faith for. 
So determination makes gives us that ability to press past every thing that would discourage us. We are determined, God, I must see this happen. There is no other option for me. I need to see this. Because it's the Bible. It's the word of God. It's the promise of God. I must see it happen. And when we stand that way, endurance and determination, great, and I can call them the power twins. Endurance, you're going to stay through time, determined, you're committed to get it. We are able to release faith. So I'll recap these five ways we express faith in God, in his word. First, by the words we speak. Second, by what we do, our actions. Third, by our praising God, even when we don't see things, even before things happen. Fourth, by our endurance. That means we hold on through time. And fifth, by our determination. Because we are committed to seeing the promise fulfilled, whatever it takes. Right? We press past every thing that we face. We are determined to possess the promise. Okay, so this is what, you know, how faith is expressed in our lives. Five uh, important expressions of faith. Now, what we want to do is we want to kind of give ourselves a little, uh, you know, okay, if I'm going to exercise faith, how do I do it? How to exercise faith, right? And I'm, 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 I'm presenting this not as a formula, uh, even though, you know, we've put it down, uh, you know, in six steps, uh, and uh, in answer, okay, you do this first, do this, do this, do this, but it's not a formula. Like in the very beginning, we said faith is based on relationship. Uh, it's our relationship with God. It's uh, it's how we live. It's based on His Word. But what must we do in order to exercise faith? Right. So in any situation, in any situation, here are. Uh, here's a way, and you can use it, you know, uh, and I've put it down in a way that you could kind of do almost like a checklist, but I, I do want to repeat that this is not some sort of a formula, but this is how you go about exercising faith in God, right? So let's just look at the six statements and then we will explain, right? So first is to have a desired goal based on God's word. Okay, what is it that you're believing God for? Right. So it could be healing, it could be finances, it could be, you know, I have a need, I have to see that met. I need a miracle in this situation. I need, uh, you know, a door to open up. Uh, I am, what, what is that goal, right? So you need to, uh, it's, it's got to be something that's based on God's word, meaning that there has to be promises that uh, that that address that, right? So it's not something fancy that I'm just thinking of pulling out of the, you know, uh, thin air. No, it's something that God has said I can have, right? So we'll talk about that, have a desired goal. Second, be determined, right? So it goes back to what we've said, that you make a decision that I'm going to have this because God said it. And you're determined. That means there's no two ways about it. There's no, it's not a wishful thinking. I'm determined to have what God has promised, okay? Thirdly, take time to fill your heart with the word. Take time. But this takes time. You know, so you write down some of the scriptures, some of the promises on which you are basing your faith. And you need to fill your heart with the word of God. Right? So, uh, f because faith is established on that word. And this takes a little bit of time. I fill your heart with the word. Number four, you pray and you receive by faith. You say, Father, I'm believing you for this. I thank you for it. I receive it by faith. Right? And, you know, you basically, you want to be in a place where in your heart, you know it is done. So that's the place you want to come to. Now, it may not happen the first time you pray. It may take a little bit of time. It's okay. Keep praying. Until in 
in, in your heart, it is done. Right? You need to come to that place. Because Jesus taught us to believe that you have received them. Right? So pray and receive by faith. Fifthly, we keep speaking our faith. You know, that's our confession. We keep speaking. You speak the word towards the situation or the need or whatever that is. You speak the word. Speak to your spirit. Number six, you act aligned to the word. You are, um, you know, take whatever steps you can aligned to the word of God. And uh, sorry, there are eight steps here. Uh, you thank and praise God. You praise him, thank him for the answer. And lastly, you got to stay in faith with endurance. Okay, so eight steps. So this is this is all it is. This is it, you know, on how to exercise faith in God. We've, everything we've talked about, we've put it down into these eight statements. Okay, so let's look at them again. So let's say, I am believing God for a certain situation, right? Now I'll just pick something, uh, 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 just an example. Let's say, uh, there's a believer who's in a very difficult situation in life. Okay. He's down to nothing. So, no money, uh, very, very, very uh, difficult situation, right? You know, maybe he's lost a job and everything. But he says, God, I know this is, I don't have to be in this forever. I know you have a better life for me, right? So I want to see myself blessed. Means I want to see myself in a place where I have a job, I have uh, enough money to take care of all my needs, I can live comfortably, and uh, I can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. I can give to other people, I can help other people. So that's his goal. Right now, he's, let's say, rock bottom. He has nothing. He's uh, in a very difficult situation financially, professionally, everything. But he has a goal. Now, this goal is based on the word of God. So how can you say that? Because, you know, we can take scriptures like this. You know, if I were in that person's place, what would I do? I would take scriptures like Psalm 1, right? Psalm 1 says that I will be like a tree, verse 3. Psalm 1 and verse 3. I will be like a tree planted by rivers of water. I will bring forth my fruit in its seas, and my leaf will not wither, and whatever I do will prosper. So I will take that scripture and say, God, that's what you will do for me. I'll take Psalm 40. Okay. What does Psalm 40, verses 1, 2, and 3 say? It says, you know, uh, he brought me out of a horrible pit, and he set my feet upon a rock, and establish my steps. So right now, I feel like I'm in a horrible pit, the bottom of the pit. But Psalm 40 verse 2 says, He brought me out of that pit, and He put my feet on a rock, and He established or He strengthened, made secure and stable my steps. And verse 3 says, He'll put a new song in my mouth. Praise to my God. Many will see it in fear and trust in the Lord. Right? Then I will take... Psalm 112. So I'm just giving you some psalms. There are many scriptures. I would probably take 10, 15 scriptures all over the Bible that tell me that I can be a blessed person, that I can have a better life. I don't have to be in the state where, you know, I am broken. I have no money, uh, without a job, and in a very, you know, at the bottom of the pit. I don't have to be that. I will take many scriptures. So I'll go from Genesis on. And I will, you know, this is because I'm, I'm basing my desired goal on the word of God. So Psalm 112 says, Blessed is the man who fears God, who delights in his commandments. Verse 2, his descendants will be mighty on the earth. Uh, verse 3, 
wealth and riches will be in his house. His righteousness endures forever. And unto the upright, light arises in darkness. So I will say, Lord, right now I feel like I'm sitting in darkness, but light will come. Light will shine into my life. Uh, you are gracious. You're full of compassion. And uh, verse 5, uh, I will be somebody who can gift graciously to other people. And I will guide my affairs with discretion. You know, and I will never be shaken. You know, so I will take these kinds of scriptures. God, this is what this is what you have promised for me. Right? So I have a desired goal. My goal is I'm going to be a person who's successful, who is blessed, who has uh, abundance, so that I can be a blessing for the kingdom of God. I don't have to stay here. That's the goal. I see myself there. And I, I will paint pictures of the kind of person I can be based on the promises of God. Right? So I have a desired goal that's based on the word. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. So I'm starting by hoping for something uh, based on the word. It's not seen. That means right now I don't have it. Right now it seems like invisible. But that's why I need faith. So I have a goal based on the word of God. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to be determined to have what God promised. I say, God, you said in your word that I will be blessed. Right? Uh, you know, I will take Psalm 128. It said, blessed is the man who fears God. And, uh, you know, he, it says that uh, he will eat the labor of his hands. He will be happy. It will be well with him. His wife will be like a fruitful vine. The very heart of his house, his children will be like all of plants around his table. So I said, God, that's the picture you said uh, of a man who fears you. That's what I want. And I'm determined to have it. Nothing is going to stop me because it's in the Bible. It's the word of God. Then what would I do? I will fill my heart with the word. So every day I'll open up these scriptures you know, if I have to spend, you know, 40 minutes of one hour just going through the same scriptures every day, I'll do it because the word has to settle in my heart and faith comes through that word. So I'll open my Bible, go, after, go through these scriptures over and over again, day after day, because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I'm going after this, right? So fill my heart with the word. So how many days will you do it? I'll keep doing it until I know, you know, until I see it happen in my life. I'll keep going back to the same scriptures, filling my heart with the word, because faith comes by hearing. It's just like food we eat, right? I can't say, well, I had food yesterday. Well, I have to eat again today. Or I can't say, well, I eat today. I don't need to eat, you know, for another month. No, you need tomorrow. You're going to eat in the after. So, uh, it's that kind of thing that you fill your heart with the word of God. You go back to those same promises. God, I am standing on this. Then what will I do? I'll pray. So, Father, I thank you that you have made me a blessed man. I thank you that this situation that I'm in is not where I need to stay for the rest of my life. I thank you that I'm going to I'm I'm a blessed man. I'm going to have what you said in your word. And you know, I will pray that way until I just receive it. It's settled in my heart. So I move from a, from praying for something to thanking him for it. That means it's my heart has gone from just asking to I have received and I'm thankful. So I will pray until I come into that place where I know God will do it in my life. Then I'll begin to speak. I'll, I'll declare the word. So I will speak and say, I speak over my finances. I declare that my finances are blessed. I declare according to God's word that God, my, my God supplies for all of my needs according to his riches. I declare that all my needs are met. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in want. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. He prepares a table for before me. My cup runs over. So I will speak to various areas of my life. I'll speak to my job. I'll say, God provides me with a good job. It is the Lord my God who gives me the power to get wealth. The Lord my God teaches me how to profit. And I receive a good job where I can grow professionally. So I will speak that in because God said he will 
give me the power to get wealth. God said, he will teach me how to profit, right? So I'll speak concerning my job. I'll speak concerning my, you know, the situations in which I will so speak the word. So I'm putting the word into my heart, but I'm also speaking the word into my life situations. Then I'll start acting in accordance to my faith. What will I do? I'll apply for jobs, right? I don't have a job. What must I do? Apply. So I'll prepare my resume and I will put it out on the job portals. I'll be ready to answer calls, do my interviews uh, and be ready to start. You know, so I'm acting my faith. I'm believing that God is going to take me to this place where I'm blessed, I'm prospering, I'm successful. Right? So that's something I can do. I can act in to my faith. And then, you know, uh, if I'm in debt, I will start speaking to the debt. I'll say, debt, I declare you're fully paid for. You're canceled. You're out of my life. I owe nobody anything but love. And uh, and uh, as money comes in, I will use, you know, of course, use my living expenses. I'll start clearing my debt. And I'm also expecting God to supernaturally, you know, uh, intervene. And so I'm expecting debt to be out of my life. Uh, all these things are actions aligned to my faith. Then I'll start praising and thanking God. So, you know, every day, Father, thank you that you brought me to this place where I'm blessed. You know, I may not be in that place yet. You know, maybe I'm still struggling, but I'll say, thank God. Father, I thank you. You're faithful that you do this for me, right? And then stay in it with endurance until all of it is done. Until I see that happen in my life, I'll just stay with the word. Stay with this. Stay in faith until these things happen. And surely, 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 things will start changing. Now, whether it takes one year or whether it takes two years, or whether it takes five years, doesn't matter. We'll stay with that until it happens, right? And God's word will come to pass. So just give an example of how you exercise faith for something, right? Now, some things may be smaller, some things may be bigger things. Um, you know, some may happen in five days, some may happen in five months. But the principle is the same. Whatever I've shared with you, these eight, eight statements, you use them all the time, any situation. This is how you exercise your faith in God. Now you need to know it in your heart. Make it part of your life. So that, you know, you don't have to... Uh, you know, maintain a checklist all the time. No, it's part of you. This is how you live. Any situation, this is what I do, right? I go to the word, this is how I live. Any situation. Small things, big things. This is how I exercise faith in God, right? And it all just flows in your life. Okay. Any questions? I know we're almost out of time. Any questions on this? Okay, so in this course, this particular lesson, you know, where we say how to exercise faith, these eight statements, it's like the main part, you know, this is like the thing that I want you to take. Now, uh, of course, we built up towards this little by little. Everything is important. <laughs> Everything in this course is important, but uh, these eight steps. I want you to remember, and I want you to say, okay, this is how this is how I'm going to exercise faith. Okay, this is key, and this is what I'm going to be doing the rest of my life, exercising faith in God. Right. All right. So we will pause here. We'll pick this up next week and share a few more things. Uh, just want to invite somebody to please uh, pray with the class and then dismiss us. Anyone can pray, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this, our Lord, what we have spent in learning about faith, Lord. We pray that, Lord, strengthen our faith, Lord, and our faith life, our spiritual life should be strengthened more, and we can relate what we have studied, Lord, in our daily life, Lord. Whatever we have studied, Lord, let it should be not kept in our hearts only, but we should practice it daily in our daily life, Lord. Thank you for 
what we have learned lord thank you for this spiritual lord lord thank you for all the day you have given us lord we are learning about your word we are learning about the kingdom lord thank you for pastor ashi thank you for all the students who have studied lord this through this course lord in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you everyone have a good weekend a good rest of the day and enjoy your weekend have a good time uh, in god's presence okay i'll see you next week bye now